Hey everybody, Chris with Random Weekend Adventures here. Today, I'm going to talk about something a little bit different. We're going to talk about 3D printing and using the cheapest resin that I could find on the internet. And honestly, the results might surprise you. I know they did me. So I know typically my channel has to do more with the outdoors um, and getting outside doing things there but it's just been so hot here lately that I haven't been able to do a lot of things outside so I've sort of started to lean my focus back into uh, some indoor hobbies that I've had for quite a few years. Uh, what we're specifically talking about today um, as I mentioned in, in the intro was 3D printing. So I've been 3D printing for quite a few years. started off with an FDM printer uh, that uses filament to print and then I slowly worked my way into a resin printer. Uh, one of the first relatively cheap uh, available resin printers, the Anycubic Photon, uh, was my original. I still have it. I use it almost on a daily basis and it's just it, a phenomenal product and it's just been doing great for me for probably two and a half years. Um, but recently, I kind of rolled up the game a little bit and with the cost of the mid-tier, mid-size printers, I guess is what you could call them, uh, coming down, I uh, finally got to a situation where I felt comfortable in getting one and uh, kind of taking that leap to move forward in the hobby. So I bought myself an Anycubic Photon Mono X. Um, it's about three and a half times the total build volume of my original Photon. And uh, trust me, I have been exploiting that greatly. Uh, it's something that I always wanted, always wished that I had and it has saved me so much time and so much headache uh, just in having the larger build volume. But there's some other features of the Anycubic Mono uh, X that really f just set it up significantly above and beyond what the original Photon was. Um, but there are tons and tons of videos out there that you can find in regards to this, so I don't really want to cover this. What I want to cover today is something that I couldn't really find a good video on, um, and that was using a very, very, very cheap resin. Um, this resin, I want to say at the time of filming, is about $24 per liter, uh, which is about $10 less. So you're talking about 30-ish percent cheaper than the most other resin you have out there, especially like the big hitters such as Anycubic, Elegoo. Um, you know, those are kind of the main resins that I've personally used in the past and had a lot of success with. So I thought, you know, hey, for $24, I'm going to give this a try and see if I can get... Uh, some really good prints out of it and see how it would compare. Um, so I want to kind of take you along that journey of exactly what I did um, to try and get this stuff to work um, and what the results after finally fine-tuning it properly provided for me. All right, so one of the things I did to try and make sure that I had this resin dialed in um, was to go through and attempt to use a validation matrix uh, print that I found on YouTube. Um, if you want to see more about that, look down in the description and I'll have a link for the Breaks and Makes channel. Uh, he went through and broke this particular print down uh, better than I ever could. and kind of goes through exactly what you're looking for within these prints. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a rundown as we go through each one of these, as we look at the different exposure times. Um, but overall, I couldn't be happier with the way that this turned out and it made it just so much easier for me to dial this baby in and make sure that I was getting the best prints possible with this particular resin because it was not even close uh, to the same settings as what I was using for my Anycubic gray resin previously. Okay, so I wanted to go through each one of these exposures uh, separately so you could kind of see the process in which I followed uh, to get me from where I started to where I ended up and how I kind of identified what the best exposure time was going to be. So we'll start off with what I was using for the Anycubic gray resin and that was 2.7 seconds. Um, so this is the puck from the 2.7 seconds and we can see a couple different things that we're going to be looking for consistently uh, throughout each exposure time. Uh, one is going to be the writing right here. You can see it's pretty muddled at 2.7 seconds. 
um, which is kind of expected if it's overexposed. Another point we're going to look at is going to be right here, uh, where these this infinity sign kind of intersects. Uh, there should be just barely touching, but this one you can see it seems to really carry over into the elevated portion of it. Another place we're going to be looking is this little logo up here. Uh, it has a little spiral, you can just barely see it. That's another place we're going to look. And then one of the final places that we're going to look is going to be right here uh, where this top row and bottom row actually meet. Uh, these corners of these, these elevated blocks uh, should just barely touch. Um, and again, this is way too much uh, exposure to the UV light, so it's definitely curing more uh, than I want it to. So then moving on to the 2.5 second, we can see it's a little bit better. It's a little easier to read the writing here. The logo actually has uh, the spiral recessed in there. We can see that uh, looking here. It's pretty close, but there's still definitely some some material that gets gets cured right up in there. And then you can see it is getting a little bit better, um, but there's still some some pretty obvious overlap there at the corners of the blocks on the top and the bottom row. So we move into two second, and it's getting even better as expected. Uh, so here, you know, we have very little space here. The writing is starting to become pretty clear. That logo looks about the same as it did on the two and a half second. But, you know, overall, we're finally starting to get, I think, to, to where, we're, where we're looking to get to. So I just continued on going down uh, 1.8 seconds. Uh, this one looks, you know, uh, pretty much the same. Where you're really starting to see it is in the letters. They really start to pop a little bit better. There's not this huge combination of, you know, uh, of resin combining those letters. But overall, you know, we're definitely getting better. So we go down to 1.5 seconds, uh, and then we're finally starting to get to where I want to be. So here we can see. Um, there's just a little bit of a gap right there. The logo's looking really good. The you know letters very clear, and then down in here, you know, really close to where we want to be. And I don't think we're quite there yet. So I moved down to 1.2 second. I'll tell you guys right now, this is by far the best uh, one that I actually printed. So logo's really good we have almost no you know infill here that gets exposed in there i mean even the cylinders and the holes look better but really the key thing here is we start looking at these corners right of these ray elevated boxes they really start to look like they're almost just barely touching at the corners and that just looks great but I wanted to continue onward just to make sure and also wanted to show you all what underexposure is going to look like. So I did one at one second and you can start to see you know you're losing some of that crisp detail in here because it's not exposing it properly and but the big thing is these, this crater that gets made right here and actually have a gap. We don't want that. We want it to just barely be touching just like it looks on the model. Um, when we upload it to our software, but just to go to an even higher extreme, which I honestly thought this was going to fail and it, it did not, this is 0.8 seconds. Um, so you can see, I mean, there's a huge gap there, there's a crater, um, really missing a lot of detail, and then there's just huge spaces. The corners aren't even touching at this point. So that's how we know, okay, we took it a little bit too low so by far, you know, this 1.2 seconds uh, is about exactly where I want to be, but I went ahead and uh, printed off a miniature at 1.1 because I felt like that was sort of a happy medium between that 1 second and 1.2 second, um, and that's what's currently printing. So once I, that's all finished up, I will compare that uh, to the Anycubic Gray resin in which I printed the exact same settings uh, just with the proper exposure time that I found doing this exact same test with the Anycubic gray resin. Alright, 
So I was able to get a few miniatures printed. Uh, I went ahead and I did the Bjorn or Bjorn, however you want to say it. The Bear's Paw. This is an August release from Signum Workshop. Um, I will go ahead and put their information for their Patreon as well as their links to my mini factory uh, in the description below. So if you guys want to support them, uh, they come out with some really, really good miniatures each and every single month. Um, you know, it's it's nice. I like them because they're not just, you know, hey, here's a half dozen 32 millimeter, you know, guys and gals pretty much. They do all kinds of cool different figurines. And I might do another video kind of showing uh, the August ones and maybe I'll continue to do that each month but I would highly recommend you guys check these out if you do have a resin printer if you don't have a resin printer or you you know don't want to go through the process of printing their miniatures uh, I do actually have a commercial license available with them uh, so I do sell them on my Etsy store information can be found in the description um, so if you'd like to buy some miniatures, help support the channel, help support me and my venture to do that, um, I would really, really appreciate it. I will uh, put a discount code in the description as well that you, that you guys can get 10% off of any uh, miniature prints within my store. And I'll do custom prints as well. So if you do anything on, you know, uh, Hero Forge uh, or Eldrick Foundry, any of those, uh, I can print those for you as well. So moving on to these two. You know, I tried the 1.2 seconds, but it just wasn't enough for the supports. Uh, it was throwing me at some huge curveballs, uh, some pretty big issues as far as trying to support his, his upper half. Can I give you an example here? Yeah, that's kind of where we ended up. So I went ahead and started upping it into the still reasonable values that we had. Um, you know, pretty much anything under two seconds was absolutely acceptable. Uh, within those calibration matrices that I showed. So I wanted to kind of find that happy medium of, okay, I can have supports, but I'm getting the best level of detail possible. And that sort of ended me up closer to that two second mark uh, versus that one, one and a half second. Uh, so here we can see we got our one and a half second exposure, 1.8 second exposure. They're very, very similar. The one thing that I really noticed was, and it's going to be really hard to pick up, but this foot just did something really weird on the lower exposure. So, and, you know, the way that this obviously prints out is, you know, that, that goes first, but I'm not really sure why it did that, whereas it was a little bit less obvious but still not perfect on the 1.8. So what I ended up doing is I changed out to a two second and that seemed to fix a lot of the issues that I had, but then I ran into a different issue with the printer that was totally my fault. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty well set on, I think two you know, seconds is gonna be the best thing for this particular resin, which is still less than what I was using for the Anycubic. Um, prior to this but yeah I'm really really happy with the way that that these turned out I'm gonna go ahead because I have a bunch of these that I've printed using different resins and whatnot I'm gonna throw each one of these onto my Etsy site for a dollar um, and it's just gonna be a what you see is what you get sort of situation I mean I have a whole bunch of them here's one I did on my standard photon you can see this is before I got my rinse and cure station a lot of uncured resin on that that bad boy, but still, I mean, the detail is just incredible for what you get out of that original photon. But I'm gonna go ahead and throw these up on my Etsy store. You guys, feel free to check that out and um, you know purchase them. You can use the the coupon code below as well. Get yourself 10% off that or anything else that you'd like me to print. Um, if you have any questions, just comment down below or hit me up on Etsy. More than happy to help answer any questions that you might have. But overall. Would I recommend the Rich Opto resin? Yes, I, I, I would. You know, I said in the beginning that the results might surprise you, and to be completely honest, you know, I was surprised that it did work as well as it did. I clearly have some tweaking to do, and I'm probably going to make another video on that entirely, uh, to be completely honest, because 
there was a few things that I kind of was messing around with to try and get better prints at lower exposure rates. Um, you know, the use of PTFE, which that alone requires a video in and of itself. Um, I'm probably going to have to change out um, my FEP sheet as well, which is fine, no big deal. I, I purchased a bunch of them. Um, but in the process of doing that, I think what I want to do is take off the original screen protector that came uh, with the Mono X. That's what I'm currently using, uh, was the one that it came with. I'm going to find those right settings. I'm going to print the same, the same miniature um, with the stock screen protector, which I don't think is going to be the best. Uh, without a screen protector, I'm going to take that risk just to see what the difference is. And then also put on uh, the recommended you know, clear standard uh, screen protectors for a Kindle that you would get um, and just see if that makes a difference. So I'll create, I'll make a video on that and we'll see how much exposure time it makes as far as difference by adding those extra layers of at least what we perceive to our eyes as a clear film over that LCD screen to help protect it. Um, and that's something you guys can look forward to. So any questions? comments send them down below i'll try to get back to everybody that i can um, but this is chris with random weekend adventures and i will see you guys next time